If you wanna be free, you know, all you got to do is say so. Yeah. Every night, every day, wake up, face the east, and pray. Most high, I know you look at me. I humbly ask you, set me free. Every night, every day, wake up, face the east, and pray. Most high, I know you look at me. I humbly ask you, set me free. Every night, every day, wake up, face the east. All right, Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrew nation. My name's Deacon Aibar. And on my right, my reader this evening is Elder Gabar. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Israel, and our Gentile friends. All right, Israel, um, I want to give all praises to the Most High Higher by Shem, Yeshaya, Kudash, while we walk for this evening, and the Most High Land us to see another Shabbat. All right, my brothers and sisters, this evening's lesson that we're going into this evening is titled Stop Playing Church. What that is? Stop Playing Church. Stop Playing Church. So that's what we're going to go into this evening. And as we go through it this evening, we're going to be covering. The difference between one playing church, the righteous going through, and the solution. So that's what we're going to be going into this evening. All right. Now, what I want to cover so we have some understanding is that we have a lot of half-hearted Hebrews out there. Okay. We're, we're tired of babysitting. We're tired of sugarcoating things. So here we are. We're at the end of the finish line. And when you're running that race, I don't know if you ever ran track, but when you're running, and you're almost down to that finish line, um, about 50 feet away, and it's going to get hard. You're going to feel that pull. You're going to feel that pain. You have to endure. You got your, your people to encourage you. So as Gathering of the Elect Church, we encourage our brothers and sisters to finish strong. And that's what we're going to do from here on out. We're going to encourage you to finish strong. If you get butt hurt, your feelings get hurt, you get emotional, do not do that. Get out the race. Get out the race. It's enough. Stop playing church. That's enough of that. Okay? So, I want to bring out, you get a chance to read Matthew 24. It talks about what's, what we're going into. And then you got um, Rex 84. These are what the government's going to be throwing at us as um, Israel. You know, they're going to be um, trying to go against us during Jacob's troubled time. So, you get a chance to read Revelation 20. Verse 4, that talks about us being beheaded. So we don't have time to be playing church. Okay, you come on here to get this word. All right, so we're going to look at some, some scriptures this evening to encourage you to stop playing church. Because your soul is on the line. Our job is we're going to feed you, encourage you, but it's going to be up to you when it's all said and done. All right. And also, it's not about how many views we get. It's how many people that's listening, okay, and participating. Maybe they had other churches, maybe they had other camps, whatever you call it. The thing is this, for your own salvation's sake, brothers and sisters, okay, take this word seriously. We're not asking you to come here to the gathering of the elect, okay? We're asking you, take this word seriously. This is, he said, his word going to be the stability of our time, okay? So don't get it twisted. We're not asking you to come here. If you decide to fellowship with us, so be it. The thing is, we're getting closer to that finish line, as the brothers have clearly stated. Stop playing with your, your salvation. Stop playing yourself for a fool. Stop playing church. It's that serious. But, hey, the ball is in your court. Do what you got to do. We're going to do what we have to do here to encourage you to stand this truth. So self-check yourself, pretty much. Go ahead, up. All right. So we're going to go into our first opening scripture, our foundational scripture. We're going into the book of Revelation. Chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 15 through 17. Okay, this is the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verses 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. All right, so we see right here in verse 15. I know thy, Shalaki, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold. So what that's talking about, if you're going to be wicked, be wicked. All right? Stop straddling on the fence. Be wicked. Don't play. If you're not giving 100%, you cold. Be wicked. Go ahead. 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spur thee out of my mouth. All right. So if you lukewarm, the Most High is going to spit you out. All right. Now let me go back up there to verse uh, 15. 
So it says, if you're gonna, like I said earlier, if you're gonna be cold, be cold, be be wicked. Now, if you're gonna be hot, meaning you on fire for the Most High. Okay, that's that's what I see in, in this verse. You be on fire for the Most High, hundred percent, because the Most High said you neither gonna be you either gonna be cold or you're gonna be hot. So be hot for the Most High. Be on fire for the Most High. You bring it hundred percent. Okay, if you don't, you lukewarm. You stand on the fence. So make up your mind today, Israel. You're gonna be cold or you're gonna be hot for the Most High. Don't play, cause you you deceiving your own selves. You are gonna bust hell wide open. Mm -hmm. Hey, let, let me let me, let me bring this out real quick if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, in Revelations three and one, showing you he's talking to the churches. He's talking to the churches. He said, and unto the angel of church of Sardis, write these things. Said he that have have the seven spirits of Ahia and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast the name that thou livest and are dead. You got all this information. You got the name of the Most High. We call what name you call it? We ain't tripping on names. But the, the Bible says you are dead. Why? Because you straddled the fence. Mm -hmm. Read. I mean, go ahead. All right. What if I get um, verse 17? Verse 17. Revelation 3 and 17. Because thou says, I am rich and increased with goods and have and have need of nothing. Now, what, what this is speaking of is those who got a good job. You got your good career. You bring it in this good money, big and you house. Like, yeah, big house, fancy car. You're like, I don't got time for the most high. I'm making this money. I'm satisfied. I got a roof over my head. The most said, well, can you read? Because let me read it over. Yeah, go because, ahead. because thou said, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art ratchet. Now, ratchet meaning the most high knows that all that rich you 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 might be fooling. The um the masses, but the most eyes know you're a wretch, you're wicked inside. Yeah, the most I know. So if you're thinking your money, your your career, your job is is you got your chest puffed out. No, nah, you're not fooling no one. Go ahead. And miserable, mm -hmm. and poor, mm -hmm. and blind, mm -hmm. and naked. So there you have it. You naked. You're lukewarm. So if, if you're thinking you got all these riches and you are making good money, no, nah, you got to continue to to preach the word of the most high. You got to get out there and bring the work. Get off your hands, okay? Now, I know you are trying to say, well, I got a job and I got to work. That's fine, but still, we got to put in work. We got to put that 100% in because the scripture says you're either going to be cold or you're going to be hot. You can't be lukewarm. So if you straddle on the fence trying to pay your bills and um, do a career, you got to fit that in to the equation. You got to bring in the most high. We work. Elder work. I work. We got jobs. But yet we we putting in a hundred percent. We decided to count the cost. We got you got to bring the word. You got talents and gifts that the Most High's placed in you. You have to bring that out. All right. They ain't doing no fooling themselves. Fooling your own self. And when, when the Bible says you are naked and you blind and naked, the Most High see everything what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're trying to impress your elders and your your pastors and whoever you looking up to when you're supposed to be trying to impress the Most High. And his precious son, Christ. Where are we going? We're going to go to um, Isaiah 58, verse 1. I'm going to bring this out real quick. So this is what we're here, what we're doing this evening, Israel, is we are encouraging the seed of Jacob to be encouraged to get out there and bring this word. You said so, Isaiah 58 yeah, and 1? 1. Isaiah chapter 58 and verses 1. Cry aloud, mm -hmm. spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So that's what we're doing this evening. We're crying out loud, okay? And we're sparing not, meaning we're not worried about your feelings. Okay, we're going to bring forth the Most High's word. And we're going to lift up the voice. That's what we're doing this evening. Go ahead. And show my people their transgression. That's what we're doing this evening. We're going to show you your transgressions where you're lukewarm. If you play in church, you lukewarm. Go ahead. And the house of Jacob, their sins. All right. So Israel, wake up. We got work to do. All right. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to get verse 12. So my brothers and sisters, I pray that you got a pen and a paper, and you write down these precepts, okay? Because it's very important that you do this. This is your soul that's going to be on the line. Because when they jump off, Jacob's trouble, and this generation, you're going to need the word to survive. Because if you don't have faith in the word, it's over. 
You're not going to make it. You're going to take the mark of the beast. All right, that's Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 and verses 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not, but how much more in the absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Do you hear that, Israel? You have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, this is Paul. He was speaking to the Philippians, okay? And when Paul was gone, they was playing church. Okay, that's why he said, not only, let's, let's look at that. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. So they was, when Paul left, they was playing around. They wasn't 100% um, with it. They was lukewarm. Now, when Paul showed up, they wanted to, you know, act like Shalom, they doing brother. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. Hey, hey, holy yeah. style. Yeah, they want to shabaki, shabaki. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know? like, it's like when the brothers and sisters around each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to show their flaw, but soon they by themselves. That's why the Bible says you're naked. When they by themselves, mm -hmm. like, man, I'm glad the niggas left, man. <laughs> now I can go back. I can take this holy as thou look off of me mm. and just be myself. Because they're trying to impress people. Right. Instead of trying to live for the most high. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. all fall short of the glory of the Most High. We all slip up, but a lot of people put on that face. Mm -hmm. So, Israel, wake up. you only deceiving your own selves. So work out your own salvation with fear, meaning to have reverence of the Most High with that fear and trembling, because this is your soul. All right. Can I read uh, verse 13? Yeah, go ahead. And, uh, Philippians 2 and 13. For it is a higher which worketh in you, both to will and and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Mm -hmm. So you see right there, you won't get into the argument when you serving the Most High. Others disputing and um, fighting, fussing among each other. No, I don't do that. Some people hate the Sabbath. Because uh, that spirit trying to jump on us. Like, man, it's the Sabbath. Oh, man, got to do a class. But that's the attitude we can't have. And I know there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there, they hate the Sabbath. They can't wait till the Sabbath is over. Mm. They can't wait. Like, man, the Sabbath that, coming. That's that lukewarm. Yeah. That's that lukewarm. You're not going to make it. You're either going to be cold or you're going to be hot. Stop striding on the fence. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to get verses 15 and 16. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Yes. But sanctify the Lord Ahiah in your hearts, mm -hmm. and be ready always to give an answer to mm -hmm. every man that's asking you a so like it, asking you a reason of the hope that is in you mm -hmm. with meekness and fear and fear. All right, so Israel, if, if this is how you know if you're lukewarm, you've been you've been with um, this church for a year or two. Not only with the church, with, with, yeah, with the most like knowing the truth. Right, knowing the truth. And you got a Christian brother come up to you or uh, whatever um, pagan come up to you and you're like, oh, I don't know what to say. Let me call elder. Or, I'm, not, I'm not saying don't call elder, but you should be to a point to where you already had the word in you. Because that's all we do at the gather of the elect church. We give you the word. So you, have, you should have nothing but precepts. Okay? So you should be ready to give an answer for why you're serving Christ. And why are you keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments? That's to anyone who comes into your pathway. Okay? I don't care if they've been a Christian for over 30 years and they're a pastor or they're a high-ranking um, Muslim, you know, wherever they, they, they go. You should always have a word, study in the word to be able to give that person. If you don't, you lukewarm. You deceive your own self. Well, they don't know nothing because they're not studying. You, you know what I'm saying? They plan, that's, that's what your brother talking about when you're playing church. If any Christian, with the foolish doctrine that they've been taught, if they come up and you cannot answer a Christian with the word of the Most High mm. by using a precept, and you got to go and call somebody on something real simple, that's when you need to check yourself. If you've been in this truth, not the God of the elect, but if you've been mm. in this truth, if you're dealing with Rakab, Brother Jacob, Nathaniel, just in this truth, what, a YouTube shopper, mm -hmm. you should be able to break down the simple, simple instructions for what the Christians know. John 3, 16. You should know that. If you cannot do that, plan church. you plan yourself. 
It's like you going to school, honor student, but you get all Fs on your report card. Mm -hmm. You might as well be like the guy that never go to school, <laughs> and never get out of his bed, and he still get an F. It's that simple. Same. All right. We're going to go to the book of James. Chapter 1, we're going to get verse 8. So, yeah, it's, it's enough of this, Israel. We got to stop playing church. We, gotta be, we have to be serious about the most high. There's dangerous times coming. We see it throughout the media. We're getting slammed right and left, but this is prophesied. It's going to get to a point that they're going to put us in FEMA camps and start chopping our heads off. You got to have faith. You got to have that word in you to sustain you. I pray that y'all write these precepts down. That's the book of James, chapter 1. We're going to get verse 8. Not only write them down, <clears throat> go back and study. Mm -hmm. James, chapter 1, and verses 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In all your ways. So if you don't know what you want to do, you double-minded, you, you don't want to be 100% in this truth, you double-minded. You're going to be unstable in all your ways. You're going to be tossed and fro for every doctrine. Because you double minded. You don't want you don't know if you want to live for the most high. You don't know if you don't want to live for the most. You just confused. You double minded. Strap, strap, you, you strap strap on the fence. fence. You you look warm. That's simple. You look warm. And see, let me say this, brother. A lot of people complain. Okay? When we were with the gathering of Christ Church, a lot of people complain, you know what? Hey, uh, uh, can't get a hold of the elder. Can't get a hold of the deacon. I can never get a hold of them. Mm-hmm. Be careful what you wish for. The mm -hmm. brothers out there probably doing they work behind the scenes. Okay? Because they're looking to please people. Right. Okay? My form always available. You mm -hmm. know how people just rang my form off the hook 24-7. Mm-hmm. See, but when they start calling, what they do? Yeah, I give you, a, I listen to you, but I'm not going to keep babysitting you in your same old sins. I'm going straight to the scriptures. I'm going to stick with the scriptures. You're going to come back and say, Two months later, do you remember me? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still going through the same old problem that I did. Well, sister or brother, did you use the advice that the Bible say? Yeah, but I stopped. Well, what, what you want me to do? Mm -mm -mm. What you want me to do? They want, they, they want us to babysit. I call them spiritual vampires. Spiritual okay? vampires. So they know not to call me. They they look for people to let you on to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they just right. draw all your energy from you. Mm. With the same old problems. We just too late in the game, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. to be, you know, still dealing with your same problem. You should be increasing. Right. Okay, I had this problem last month. You know what I'm saying? Or last year. I got over that. Problems gonna always come. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they don't call me as much as they used to because they know I go straight for the juggler. Mm -hmm. they, don't call, they don't call you as much no more. No. You know what I'm saying? Because we still, as long as you stick to this book. People ain't going to call you. They spiritual vampires. These are the people that's playing church. And they, it's like a weight they holding you down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nah, sister, brother, get over it. Nah. Sacrifice. Like Christ did. Go mm -hmm. ahead, brother. All right. And, we, and we're going to go into that, what Elder just brought up right now. You got to have that oil in you. Okay? Oh, praises. We're going to go into Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to start at, at verse 1. So if you low on oil, you in trouble. You better have your oil filled. filled. That lamp, you got to have that lamp full. You say 25 and what up? Uh, we're going to start at verse 1. Matthew chapter 25 and verses 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, mm -hmm. which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And five of them were wise and mm -hmm. five were foolish. All right, so we look at that five wise. That's that 100%. Okay, that's that hot. They, they on fire for the most high. And then you got, and fire were foolish. That's the one that's straddling on the fence. Playing church. That's, yeah, that's the one that's playing church. Okay, go ahead. Verse 3. Then that were foolish, but they, then, so like it. They that were foolish, their left. Took their left. And, so like it. Yeah, took their left and took no oil with them. All right, so when you're not studying and you're not getting that word in you, you don't got no oil for your lamp. You're going to be in trouble. Let's look at that. Go ahead, verse 4. Verse 4. <clears throat> but the wise took oil in their vessels mm -hmm. with their lamps. Mm -hmm. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Mm -hmm. Six. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, 
the bridegroom cometh. Mm -hmm. Go ye out to meet him. Mm -hmm. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Trimmed their lamps. So we're going to look at that. Let's see what that trimmed lamps are. Go ahead. Verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, mm. Give us your oil, <clears throat> for our lamps are gone out. Now, I wonder how their lamps are going out. They don't got no word. They play in church. They, they half-stepping. They half-hearted. They're um, cold. So now, when, when it goes down, like I was be warning you as it goes down, Jacob's trouble, FEMA camps, Rex 84, you, you're going to get your head beheaded, Revelation 24. When it goes down, and you don't got no word in you, which is the oil for your lamp, which is you. Which is the word. Which is the word. You in trouble. Like he said, this word going to be the stability of our time. Like we were saying last week, brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's going to come a time when you ain't going to have what I think that thing up there they call a periscope Satellite. and, and yeah, uh, periscope. The YouTube. Yeah. You ain't going to have that. So this is what Christ is talking about. Mm -hmm. If you ain't got this word on you, you ain't got no oil in you. So when all these things that the brother is talking about, you ain't going to know how to deal with them. Mm. It's that simple. Hey, fix that thing up there for me, brother. Go ahead. All right, we're going to go to verse... Verse 9? Yeah, verse 9. But the wise answer saying, not so. Not so. Least there be not enough for us mm -hmm. and you. Now, you see, you're going you're gonna to be trying to call the elder when it goes down. You're going to be trying to get in contact with me. And other you, brothers. Yeah, all the other brothers, you're not going to be able to. You're in trouble now. That's why you got to get this word in you, Israel. You have to get this word in you. Go ahead. But go ye rather to them that sell mm -hmm. and buy for yourself. It's going to be too late. Everything going to be shut down. They're going to um, excommunicate everything. YouTube, internet, everything going to be cut off. Your cell phone, all that's going to be cut off. Technology. You're done. Well, let's, let's, we, we want to read some more? Yeah, we're going to go to uh, verse 10. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, mm -hmm. the bridegroom came, that's Christ, and they that were ready went in with him mm -hmm. to the marriage, mm -hmm. and the door was shut. The door was shut, okay? So you don't got time to be playing around with this word, okay? The Most High brought you here to get his word. So get it, receive it, and walk in it. Because when, when I'm going to cover that too. When it's time to die, you're not going to have time to repent. You're going to be lukewarm. You're going to bust hell wide open. Because you was half-hearted with, with his word. You was playing church. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgin, mm -hmm. saying, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. open to us. <laughs> but he answered and said, said, Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. I know you not. Mm. Go ahead. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour mm -hmm. wherein the Son of Man cometh. So Israel, get this word in you. Study to show thyself approved. Second Timothy 2.15. Get his word in you. Because you don't want to hear this on Judgment Day. You don't want to hear, I know you not. You don't want to hear that from Christ. And you don't want to hear when you ain't ready. That's right. why we say stay ready you ain't got to get ready. And this is the opportunity right now, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. The Most High has made it so convenient for us to get this word. Mm. You're going to be sitting at home in your doctor house. Nobody can see you. You're getting the word. What's your excuse? Mm. Faith without works is dead. If you're not exercising this law, statute, commandments, putting forth, going forth and putting this word out, you playing church. It's that simple. It's that simple. That's and we're right. here to encourage you. Right. Sometimes, that's what the brother brought up, Isaiah 58, cry loud, spare not. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for that violin, oh, come on, people, this yeah. and that. The churches do that to you because you're paying them. Mm -hmm. you, they give you those smooth words, mm -hmm. okay, because they want that moolah, that money to keep you coming back. Mm -hmm. Here, we don't care. We're going to tell you just like it is. Just like the scripture says. Thus said the Lord. All right, where right. are we going? Now, on your own, you can read verses 14 through, through 27. It talks about the lazy servant, okay, and the talents. So you can read that on your own, okay? That's 14 through 27. What's you that, can, uh, the same book? Yeah, in the same book of Matthew, because we're going to uh, go ahead and go to the next one. So you can read that on your own. We're going to start at verse 28. We're staying in Matthew. 
We're going to get verse 28. 25, 28? Um, start at, yeah, stay at 25, go to verse 28. Verses 28 reads, Take therefore the talent from him, mm -hmm. and give it unto him which hath ten talents. All right, so once you get that time to read the verses 14 through 27, where it talks about the talents, if you don't utilize the talents that the Most High has given you, the Most High is going to take that away and give it to the the, the, the other brothers and sisters that's, that's doing the work. That's doing the work. And that's talking about the knowledge. And let me, let me say this also, I, mm -hmm. the reason the brother's telling you read this on your own, because most of our people is used to sitting up in church going like this. Mm -hmm. Yes, pastor. <laughs> yes, pastor. Oh, praise the Lord. The pastor's giving me everything I need to know. We're not here to read the book for you. We can read the story for you. That's why you just jumped to 28. Mm -hmm. We're not so, going to spoon feed We're not going to uh, yeah, spoon feed you. You know, like that lazy servant. He's so lazy. He can't even get him, get him some water. He's so lazy. Mm -hmm. He can get him, put his, <laughs> you know, don't want to do nothing. That's the spirit. Mm -hmm. So this is why the brother tell you in your own time, go back and read these stories. And you say, oh, I know I read those stories before. <laughs> well, you watch football and baseball all day, every day. The same game, the same move, same everything. Repetition, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Well, you ain't got when you ain't gonna have this book. When you on the run, the Wabba walk can put these words back into your memories. If it's not in you, can't put it out of you. Can't put it out. Of you. All right. Let's get verse twenty nine. Verse twenty nine, Matthew twenty five, verses twenty nine. For unto every one that hath hath shall be given, mm -hmm. for he shall have abundancy. Mm -hmm. But from him that hath not shall be taken away. Even that which he hath. Mm -hmm. Get verse 30. And cast ye, and cast ye the unprofitable servant unto our darkness. Mm. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. So that's what's gonna happen to you. You lukewarm, you, you're not utilizing the talents and gifts that what elder said, that knowledge. This is where you're going. Weeping and gashing of teeth. You that unprofitable servant. You just sitting there. You, you got, got all this word in you. Mm -hmm. You just sitting there on your hands, not doing nothing. That's what he told Peter. If you love me, feed my sheep. The, the most I give you some knowledge to go out and teach people, mm -hmm. but you won't just sit on your hands. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So Christ told Peter three times, if you love me, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. So if you got these talents, which is knowledge, and you're not sharing them, what are you actually saying? You don't love Christ. You don't love Christ. The Christ said, if you love him, feed the sheep. Feed the sheep. Ezekiel 3.17, their blood will be on your hand. Mm -hmm. You can't say, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know how to, uh, you know, uh, do the breakdown of John 3.16. I didn't know how to do the, uh, tell. I didn't want to hurt nobody's feelings and tell them they got to mm -hmm. keep the law, statutes, commandments. You just going along to get along. You ain't doing nothing but playing yourself. That's another trick of Satan. Deceiving your own self. All right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to get verses 21 through 23. And I, once again, I know you heard this before, but let this sink in. Because if, you, if you're not, if you're, like the most I said, you're either going to be cold or you're going to be hot. You can't be in between. So on judgment day, you know if you play in church. You know within if you play in church. Mm -hmm. This was, this was going to happen on judgment day. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, mm. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that's that's not everyone. Everybody that we see come in into the truth, not everyone's going to be saved. Somehow they fell off. Some, somehow they were deceiving them on selves. They was putting on a good front, showing up to the Hebrew feast and you know, had their garments and knee trees on, but they fooling them on selves. Shaloming you to death. Mm. Fooling them on selves. Go ahead. But he, mm -hmm. let me read that again. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, do you hear that? The will of the Father. What's the will of the Father? Keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments, and receiving Christ, and getting out there, fulfilling Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Go ahead. Many will say to me in that day, mm. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm -hmm. And in thy name have cast out devils. Mm -hmm. And in thy name done many wonderful works. So that they're going to be, I'm going to break this down to where you can relate. It's going to be some, 
Lord, Lord, I showed up to the Hebrew feast and the holy feast. And Lord, Lord, I had my matrion. And Lord, Lord, I was a part of this church. And I don't understand. That's what the Lord going to say to you. Go ahead. And then, when I profess unto them, mm -hmm. I never knew you. Mm. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity, that's work sin. Sin. Okay, you practicing sin, evilness, wickedness. Just by not going out teaching the brothers and sisters. Right. Once you got this daughter, well, we just got to read. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You get them talent. Christ said, if you love me, feed my sheep. Right. Okay, that's whatever comes out of Christ's mouth is a commandment. Mm -hmm. Okay? And let me bring this out on this if you don't mind, brother. Go ahead. I really want y'all to think about what the brother, what I just read and what the brother brought out in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. These are, I say this all the time, this is not worldly people. Worldly people don't prophesy in Christ's name. They don't cast out devils in Christ's name. These are quote unquote church people. Mm. Okay? So-called Hebrew Israelites. The Sunday worshipers. The Shalomers. Mm -hmm. Okay? The higher by Shem and Shia. The people that's called on the other name. That's these people that Christ's talking about. Mm -hmm. You get all the way to the finish line. Like, man, I'm in, man. I ain't no crap lost stripping pork. And, they, and that Lord, Lord, they're going to be crying out, Master, Master, we prophesied in your name. We did all these work that Christ was talking about. I never knew you. Mm. Like he told the virgins. Okay? They knocking on the door. He didn't even shut the door on them. So stop playing. Stop playing church. Russian roulette. And church. Stop playing church. Yeah. So so Israel is let me let me um add, add to that too. You you have to utilize the gifts and talents that the most high has given you. Don't sit on them. That's the will of the Father. Okay? He bless you with gifts and talents to fulfill his word, his will. Okay, so that's what it's all about. Fulfilling the scriptures, feeding the sheep, Israel's people, I mean, Yeshua's people, that's what we are to do. Let's stop playing church. All right. Let's go to 1 Kings. We're going to go into the um, chapter 18. And I'm going to get one verse in here. Because they was playing church back then. During the um, Elijah time, they was playing. Ain't nothing new up under the sun. You say 18 and what else? Uh, verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verses 21 reads, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long have ye between two opinions? Yeah, two opinions. So let's let's see. So Elijah was, was, was telling Israel, How long are you going to hop between two opinions? You're either going to be for the Most High or you're going to be for Satan. Okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead with uh, finish that out. If the Lord be... Ahiah mm -hmm. followed him, but if Balel then followed him, mm -hmm. and the people answered him not a word. All right, so here you have it. This is in the Old Testament, okay, back then. So you got to make up your mind. They was playing church back then. They didn't know they wanted to follow the Most High or serve the, the, those false prophets, Israel at the time. Mm. So you can't be hot between two opinions. You're either going to be for the Most High or you're not. You got to make up your mind. All right. Now let's go to second. Read twenty-two. Oh, uh, go ahead. twenty-two. Then said Elijah unto the people, "I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Balaz, Balaam, prophets are four hundred and fifty men. What is that saying to us, man? It ain't gonna be too many brothers out here that's doing this work. Right. He said, but the faker, the one that's faking uh, Baal." He got 450 <laughs> men that's out there doing the work. Man. That's going back <laughs> to that remnant. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? Let me read oh, that again. Let me read from 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long have, have ye between two opinions? Mm -hmm. If the Lord be God, follow him. Mm -hmm. But if Baal... Then follow him. In other words, if, if you believe in the Most High, follow him. If you believe in the wickedness, follow him. The Baal, the false uh, doctrine. Mm -hmm. Then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Ain't nobody going to answer us a word. We bring this lesson out. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be like, because you know inside mm -hmm. what you're doing. Right. You're not supposed to be doing what you want to do. Verse 22. 
Then said, then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal prophets are 450 men. Hmm. You got all these Muslims out there. You got the Mormons out there. The mm -hmm. Jehovah Wickedness out there. The seven day foolish of Venice and the, the Catholic churches out there doing the work. That's by L prophets. Mm -hmm. We got some Hebrews out there on the corner, is, which is paid agents, that's cursing our brothers and sisters out. But how about the brothers and sisters sitting here look, looking at this video? Mm. You know what they're saying? Oh, I don't know too much, brother. Mm -hmm. Making excuses. I, I, you know, I, I, I got to wait till I go to the academy. <sighs> I got to wait till I get like 1,500,000 mm. verses up under me before I go and teach the people. Trust in the little, you'll be trusting a lot. Mm -hmm. Teach what you know. So like you, brother. No, it's all good, Elder. All right. Now we're going to go into um, 2 Peter. 2 Peter what? Chapter 2. We're going to get verse 22. You, 2 Peter chapter, again? Uh, 2? Yeah. Second Peter chapter two and verse verses twenty-two. 22. Mm -hmm. Second Peter, I'm still not the only first Peter. Sorry. So we're going to Second Peter chapter two, verse twenty-two. Second Peter chapter two and verses twenty-two. Mm -hmm. But it is happened unto them according to to the true proverbs. Mm -hmm. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, mm -hmm. and the snow and the slur that was washed to her willow in the mirror. So we see the scriptures letting us know. So you came into this truth, you was on fire. Now you got you a couple of books and you backing away. You're going back to what you used to do. Keep that fire. Forget that oil, you get his word in you. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're gonna go back to your old vomit. Okay, you're gonna return. So I'll bring this scripture out so you can see what's happening if you're not on fire for the most high. What is on fire? You 100%. You studying. You praying. You getting into his word. You fellowshipping. That's 100%, Israel. We don't got time to be playing games. All right. Let me bring 21 up. Go ahead. For, this is what the Bible says in uh, 2 Peter uh, 2 and uh, 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness mm -hmm. than after they have known it. To turn from the holy commandments mm -hmm. delivered unto them. Mm. But it has happened unto them according to a true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the snow that was washed up to her wallow in the mirror. All right. So Israel, repent and move forward. Let's get this word out. All right. Let's go to... Uh, but you know the Bible says it's going to be a falling away in the church first. Right. It's going to be a falling away first, so... There's going to be correction um, at the church first. Mm -hmm. We're going to be corrected first. And I'm going to bring that out, too. But let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 21. We're going to get verse 8. The book of Revelations, chapter 21, verses 8. Mm -hmm. But the fearful and unbelieving mm -hmm. and the abominable Mm -hmm. Abominable and murderers and whoremongers mm -hmm. and sorcerers mm -hmm. and idolaters mm -hmm. and all liars mm -hmm. should have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is this was gonna happen to you if you lukewarm, that unbelieving, that fearful, you're, you're lukewarm. There's no fear in us, okay? Get out there, stop playing. This is you in trouble. It says burn it with fire and brimstone. All right. Let's go to Galatians chapter 6. And uh, we're going to get verses 7 through 9. So Israel, you, like I said, you playing church, you deceiving your own self. And we're going to cover that right now in Galatians chapter 6. We're going to get verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Be not deceived. Mm -hmm. A higher is not mocked. He sees everything. You're not going to mock the most high. Go ahead. For whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. All right. So if you're sowing laziness and you're sowing wickedness, 
you you, you sowing um, lukewarm, you, you're going to reap that. You're going to get exactly what's coming to you. Or if you're sowing nothing. <laughs> you're sowing nothing. That's that, that cold. You, you're going to reap what you sow. Go ahead. Verse 8. He that soweth to his own flesh mm -hmm. shall of the flesh reap corruption. So that's what you're going to reap. You're not doing nothing. That's the flesh. You're being lazy. You're sitting on your hands. That's that flesh. you that unprofitable servant. Mm. Go ahead. But he that soweth to the spirit mm -hmm. shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So that's all praises. When you when you sow to the spirit and you, you, you're doing the works, you're doing the will of the father. Like what you're seeing right now, as, we, as we're bringing forth the word, we're sowing to the spiritual realm. We're sowing seeds. We edifying um, Yeshua's people. If you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. You love me, feed my sheep. Feed his sheep. Now let's let's get verse nine. Verse nine, and let us not be worried mm -hmm. and well doing, for in due season mm -hmm. we shall reap if we faint not. So we we can't get. We can't give up, Israel. You can't. You came into this truth, and you don't see uh, results. Fired up. Yeah, you can't fire it up, and you're like, man, I don't see nothing yet. Don't give up. You keep going. Don't faint, as the scripture says. Okay, you don't lose hope. Faith is the unseen, so we got to we got to stay focused and, and keep our eyes on the prize. Keep our eyes on the finish line. Keep our eyes on Yeshua. Okay, don't lose hope, because if you lose hope and you give up, it says. Well, yeah, verse 9. Yeah, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Okay? So you continue those good works, even if they're not receiving. Like we know, like like the feedback that we're getting right now, before we, we did this lesson, we can't be worried about it. We got to come even harder, as, as Elder said. We got to bring the word to you. Hard. Hard. In the pain. In the pain. We're going hard in the pain this evening. So receive his word. Don't because we love you. you. Right. Because we love you. We don't want you to... It's like you finishing a race. You you start a race, mm -hmm. and then you get halfway through the race, and you get weary. Mm -hmm. You get tired. What makes you tired? <laughs> your family, did, did your family go against you. Your wife, your spouse, whatever, start going against you. Mm -hmm. You don't get to go out there on Friday night and do the stinky leg. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't do the things you got you you used to doing. What the flesh like to do. Mm. It gets real lonely in this walk. Lonely. Mm -hmm. Everybody out there having a grand time. But you ask yourself, what they going to do when the party's over? Mm -hmm. When life is, because life is, to these people, life is just a party. Mm -hmm. To us, it's a war. A spiritual battle. He that endured to the end, mm -hmm. the same should be saved. The same should be saved. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. <laughs> If you, you want to go into this kingdom, you got to endure. Endure what? This flesh. Paul said the spirit and the flesh fight war against each other daily. Mm -hmm. We got to understand that. But it's not meant for you. If you play church and you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. go out there. Get you four ham sandwiches. <laughs> Party like it's 1999. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when the books are open and you, and you ain't got no works there, what you sow, mm -hmm. you're going to reap. A probable servant. And if you don't sow nothing, that's what you're going to reap. And what is that? Everlasting fire. Mm. If you reap something, you get everlasting life. What we just got to read. So Israel, go out there and do the right thing. Get off the couch. Talk to your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your co-workers, the person in the grocery store. Make t-shirts. Make hats. With the word on them. Somebody come up and ask you. Sometimes you ain't got to open your mouth. Mm -hmm. right, right, put a shirt, a shirt on. Put a hat on with a scripture on it. Mm -hmm. That's part of getting this gospel out. Right. Use them talents. Use wisdom. But you don't want to do that. Because my neighbors might see me. <laughs> My co-workers might see me. That's the fearful. That's the fearful. Those are the ones that shame. Christ said, if you deny me in front of man, I will deny you in front of my father. Mm -hmm. Watch yourself. Mm. 
All right. Now, we're going to go into the righteous going through. Because like I said in the beginning of the lesson, I'm, I'm going to cover the difference between a slothful servant and, and the righteous. Okay. The person playing church. And now we're going to cover um, the righteous going through. Okay. So we're going to go through when, you, when you're walking, when you're on fire for the most high. You know. So we're going to get Proverbs chapter 24. And we're going to get verse 16. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. For a just man falleth seven times. So we're going to struggle. We're going we gonna to face that opposition. It's times when we're going to come short. But we got to repent, get back on our knees and pray to the Most High. Ask for forgiveness and move on. Go ahead. And rise up again. We're gonna rise. He's going to rise us up. Once we repent and we're, and we're truly sorry and he's going to forgive us and we got to move on. Don't let Satan bring in condemnation. Okay, because once you're in Christ, there is no condemnation in Christ. You're shy. Go ahead. But the wicked mm. shall fall into mischief. Now, the wicked, you're going to fall into You wicked, you're going you're gonna to reap all types of evilness. You're gonna, it's going to always be issues and dramas in your life that you're going to be going through. Okay, because you're wicked. You're not doing the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. You're going to fall into mischief. All right. Now, we're going to skip. Let me, okay. let me, let me go ahead. Uh, let, no, me that's say, let me say that. It says, for the just man falleth seven times mm -hmm. and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Mm -hmm. That's just another trick that the devil used, okay? We're going to fall. Get up, dust it off, keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us that, quote, unquote, try to be righteous, mm -hmm. over-righteous, like they're keeping all the commandments, <laughs> And when they see when our brothers and sisters fall, because you're not in this camp, that camp, what's camp, this church, this church, this is what they do. What the Bible tells you not to do. It's another trick of the devil. Verse 16. I mean, verse 17. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth. So where we're supposed to be rejoicing, we see a brother and sister fall. Okay? And let not thy heart be glad when he stumble. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of Israelites out there. Look at that nigga over there. Look at that. I'm glad she fell off. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you snapped. Guess right. what? The devil just got you. You just got caught with the hook. Mm -hmm. We supposed to pray for our brothers and sisters when they fall them off, falling off. When they going off, we supposed to correct them. The Bible says, mark them that cause confusion. Also, mark them as lifting them up, encourage them to get back up. So don't fall into that part either. All right. I can wait for that, Adam. All right, we're going to go stand in Proverbs. Let's go to chapter 12. We're going to get verse 21. Once again, the, the name of this lesson this evening is called Stop Playing Church. There's a lot of them out there doing it, brother. Man. You say 12 and 21 up? Yes. Proverbs chapter 12 and verses uh, 21. There should no evil happen to the just. All right, so don't. No evil is going to come to the just. Understand that. Now, you're going to go through, but don't worry about evil. That's going to happen to the just, as the scripture says. There's a difference. Go ahead. But the wicked shall be filled with mischief. See? That lukewarm servant, that unprofitable servant, you're going to be filled with mischief. So if you have parted and you wonder why you're going through what you're going through and you're playing church, that's why. You're wicked. You consider wicked to the most high. You lukewarm. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why your life is upside down. You wonder why you can't pay this bill. You wonder why this is all this evil mischief is happening to you. Verse 22 tell you why. <laughs> Verse <Exactly>. 22. <laughs> Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Mm. But they that dearly truly are his delight. But they that dearly truly are his delight. So you're lying when you're saying Ahiah or Yah or Yahweh Shai or whatever name you said. Mm. I'm going to do thy will. You're doing the same thing that our forefathers did. Say, we're going to do everything the Lord say. Mm -hmm. Those lying lips. Lying lips. And you're lying to the wrong person. Lying lips. All right. Deceiving your own self. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to Psalms 37. You're bringing out some. Well, you, you, you're going for the juggler tonight. <laughs> All praises to the most high. He's right. going for the juggler. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you're saying, but you. But it's time. Psalms 37 and we're going to start at verse 18. Verses 18. Psalms chapter 37 verse 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright. Mm -hmm. 
and their inheritance inher inheritance shall be forever. So don't get discouraged. He knows the upright. He knows what's going to happen to us, Israel. You stay focused and do what you're doing. Go ahead. They should not be ashamed mm. in the evil time. So that goes back to the oil. They should not be ashamed in the evil time. So when it, this government start tripping on us, we're not going to be ashamed because we're feeding ourselves with the word. If you're feeding yourself with the word, mm -hmm. when that evil time comes. Go ahead. They, uh, Verse they should not be ashamed in the evil time. Mm -hmm. And in the days of famine, mm. they shall be satisfied. So we're going to be satisfied. Those who's filling themselves with the word of the most high, he's going to take care of you. Scripture says, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So he's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of us. If you feed yourself with the word. Go and, also, and also, can I say something on yeah. that one? It say, and they should not be ashamed in the evil time. We are in the evil time. Everybody's waiting for that evil time to come. Those are the ones that sleep. You're in the evil time right now. You're in Matthew chapter 24. Okay. It say, and the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. The famine of what? The famine of this word. Mm -hmm. If you're getting this out, this this uh, word in you right now, on a day when this word is no more, you're gonna be satisfied because it's in you. Mm. Verse twenty. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as a fat of lamb. Mm -hmm. They shall consume unto smoke; shall they consume away? You gonna consume away? Let's go ahead and skip down to twenty-three. Twenty-three. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, mm -hmm. and he delight in his ways. All right, so when you're about your father's business and you're doing the will of the father, he's going to order your steps. He's going to guide you into all righteousness, okay? And the Lord's going to delight in, 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 in our ways because we're pleasing to the father. We're doing what, what um, the father asks us to do. But if you're not, you're that wicked, unprofitable servant, you don't have mischief in your life. Let's go ahead with 24. 24. Though he fall, mm -hmm. he should not be utterly cast down. All right, so that goes back to you slip into temptation or whatever, and you, you, you're you struggling in a certain area. The Most High is not going to utterly cast us down. He's going to show us that grace and that mercy. Okay, now let's, let's see what's going to happen to the wicked, though. Go ahead. Though he fall, he should not be utterly cast down. Mm. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So the Most High is going to hold us up, Israel. He's going to hold you up. You're keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments. He's going to hold you up. Let's go to 25. I have been young, mm -hmm. and now I am old. Mm -hmm. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Begging for bread. So we're not going to beg for bread in that time of famine. Physically and spiritually, which is the word. We're not going to work. The Most High is going to take care of his people. He's going to take care of the lawgivers that receive Christ. All right. Let's go to 37. Verse 37 reads, Mark the perfect man mm -hmm. and behold the upright. Mm -hmm. For the end of that man is peace. All right. So mark that perfect man. Who, what was the perfect man? Those who keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Now, we just went throughout the scriptures. Don't get confused with being perfect. You're going to fall, okay? But you get back up. Why? Because you're practicing righteousness. A righteous act. Okay? Yeah. You, you're practicing that righteous act. You're not practicing wickedness. You're not that workers of iniquity. You meaning you're being lazy and you're practicing being lazy. You're not doing nothing about it. You're thinking you're deceiving um, us over here or, you know, the other brothers and sisters. But you're not. You're deceiving your own selves. Yes, sir. Because you got angels writing it down. Everything that you do. All right, let's go to First Peter. Well, actually, let's go to um, shall I that? Cancel that. Go ahead. Let's go to Second Peter. All right. Chapter two, verse nine. Second Peter, chapter two and verse nine. The Lord know how to deliver the godly out of temptation, mm -hmm. and to reserve the unjust until mm -hmm. the day of judgment. To be punished. So the most high, the Lord knows how to deliver us when we go through temptation. He's going to, he's going to make a way of escape for us. He's going to look out for us. He already sees it ahead of time, and he's going to make a way of escape for us. So when you, now understand, temptation is not a sin. 
temptation, the, the sin comes in when you yield. You act on it. Right. You act on that, that temptation. You give in to it. And you lust after it. And you 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 workers of iniquity. Okay? Now, and to the reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So the most high is gonna take care of the unjust. Stop worrying about your enemies. Stop worrying about you see supposedly um the wicked prospering. Okay, because right. Satan gonna take care of Satan. You mm -hmm. got you gotta understand that. That just in this physical realm. Don't worry about that. Don't get um jealous and don't get bitter because you see them prospering. Okay? The Bible tells us don't worry how the wicked is gonna be punished. Mm -hmm. Worry how the righteous is gonna be saved. So let's get it, Israel. All right. Now we're gonna go into the Apocrypha. We're going into Ecclesiasticus, chapter two. You want to explain this book for the people that are gonna run across this video? Yeah, the Apocrypha. That's the um, the six. The, I should like it. The fourteen books that were taken out of the sixteen eleven original King James version. Who took it out? The uh, Protestant um, Church or the Catholic Roman Catholic Church. They took that out. Why they took it out? Because it, it's our records and it reveals um, all. Um, it was part of what King James put together because you had your Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and then you had the New Testament. And it was all put together, but they took it out because it revealed the end time our prophecy. History. Yeah, it reveals our history, yeah. our, our enemies, you know. It, it, the different captivities we was in, right. what was going on, what Israel was doing. Mm -hmm. So these are the, misses, misses, the missing links right. when we read the Bible, okay? So we're going to Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2. We're going to get verses 4 and 5. You would have me read this little thing, but I got it. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, <laughs> verses 4 and 5. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. So when we're going through Israel, take it cheerfully. That storm that you went, because this, what I'm covering now is the righteous going through. Okay? Take it cheerfully. It's going to be okay. Don't think of it as an evil thing happening to you. You're... You're practicing, you're doing what you are. You're doing the will of the Father, okay? Don't think that your evil is happening because you, you're you like, man, why is this happening to me? Go ahead. And be, well, whatsoever is brought upon thee, mm -hmm. take cheerfully. Mm -hmm. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. All right, so Israel, don't be confused, okay, with the wicked and you going through, okay? If you're going through, embrace it. Take it cheerfully. Be patient. You're being brought to a lower state. All, if you look out throughout our records, from Genesis to Revelation, all the brothers and sisters had to be brought to a lower state. Yes, sir. We had to go through the fire. We're going to look at that in verse 5. Go, got to go through the fire. You got to go through the fire. That's that pressure. That's that, that um, opposition that you got to go through to be molded and shaped. That's why you're being brought to a lower state. I experienced it. Elder experienced it. We all going to experience a lower state, but that does not mean you're not living for the Most High. You're just going through. Okay. I know greater is He that's in me than He that's in this world. Mm -hmm. I've been so low, I feel like I can play handball with the curve. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and we're gonna go through it again mm -hmm. and again and again. Mm. The Bible says, "Through much tribulation will you enter into the kingdom." Through much tribulation. Mm -hmm. All right. Get verse five. Verse five. For gold is tried in the fire, mm -hmm. an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. So you're going to be tried in fire, Israel. Don't faint. We just covered that in Galatians. Don't faint. Don't, don't get discouraged for well-doing. In due time, you're going to reap. Hang in there. Don't faint not. Okay? You're being tried because you're gold to the most high. Now, it says acceptable man. You got to be tried so you can be acceptable to him. He, he, he got to bring out those gifts. And talents out of you. And get okay. all that dirt and filth <laughs> out of us. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so furnace of adversity. Go ahead. Okay. And woman is in men. Mm -hmm. So the woman, you included in this. All right. Now, let me, let me read verse no, six. Verse six. Remember verse five again. I'm going to read it all together. Four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. Where, what's, whatsoever is brought upon thee, Take cheerfully, mm -hmm. and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, mm -hmm. an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, mm -hmm. and he will help thee. Order thy way of right, and trust in him. Mm -hmm. This is the fight that we must go through. Mm -hmm. 
So you're going to go up and down, in and out. People are going to look at you like you're yeah. an alien. <laughs> okay? Mm. That's give you no reason not to play church. So you got the, the Bible tells you search out your own mm. salvation. With fear and, and trembling. trembling. Mm. Mm. You're not going to the kingdom on a buddy plan mm. or a family plan. This is not no all you can eat. Mm. One man, one woman at a time. And um, also in um, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, it talks about that Israel, we're going to be war, worn out. Worn out. So what does that let you know? You, we're going to go through. We're going to be decapitated, shot. I mean, we're going to be going through for Christ's sake. Well, so, also, <laughs> also in the Bible, say, it's saying Daniel. He mm -hmm. said he's going to what? He's going to wear out the saints. Mm. Wear us out. So you're going to know. We always say you're going to know you've been in the fight when you get in the kingdom. <laughs> That's going to be your rest. You know what I'm saying? Just like the uh, the man is working your fingers to the bone Monday through uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. When the Shabbat comes, you'll be like, man, I just want to kick my feet up, just relax. Mm. And get that spiritual food. Because there's so much negative out there six days mm -hmm. a week. So we got the, the, uh, the Shabbat is to regenerate you. Right. So you're going back out the war. Mm -hmm. Come Sunday. Believe it. All right. All right. All praise it to the Most High. We almost done. Let's let's go to uh, Isaiah. Now we're gonna get the solution. We're going to Isaiah, chapter twenty-eight. We're gonna get verse nine and ten. So Israel, I pray you write these precepts down. You get this understanding because we're gonna go through. We're gonna be worn out. And if Where's you ain't writing out? them down, if you ain't writing them down, that's on you. <laughs> that's on you. <laughs> that's on you. Isaiah twenty-eight nine and ten. Yes. Yeah. Whom should he teach knowledge? Mm -hmm. And whom should he make to understand doctrine? All right, so who? Who who are we teaching this knowledge to? Israel, receive his word. Okay, go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk mm -hmm. and drawn from the breast. All right, so you got to get your study on Israel. You got to come off that milk. You got to stop playing church, period. You got to get off the milk and get onto the meat. Like, like I said earlier, you've been in this truth for more than two years. You got to be on the meat. Our people need to hear the word. We got to edify one another. We got to move on. We don't got time to be lie together. And, and let me say that. The way he said more than two years. Don't get it twisted. So because the people, people's out there like, well, I only been in six months. I only mm -hmm. been for two months. If you know a little, teach a little. Mm -hmm. Teach what you know. Just do this, put it like that. Teach two years. Know. You ain't getting a step of approval because you've been for two years. If you know John 3.16, teach John 3.16. Mm -hmm. What it is, see, people try to get all this all together. Right. All together. Like, I got to learn everything at what? No. Just like you got to crawl before you walk. Mm -hmm. Let John 3.16 be your baby. Or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Study on that. Mm -hmm. And still window shop over here. And, you know, listen to the lessons and so on and so forth. But you say, what? I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this one breakdown up under my belt. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I'm going to teach y'all until I get two, three, four, five, six, whatever. All mm -hmm. right. Verse 10. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, mm -hmm. precept upon precept, mm -hmm. line upon line, mm -hmm. line upon line, mm -hmm. here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue, Will he speak to this people? All right. So we, we see right here in, in verse 10. This is how you study. Okay. Precept upon precept. Okay. Here a little. There a little. Line upon line. So that's how you study Israel. Okay. You ask the Most High to give you that wisdom and understanding. And this is how you do it. Precept must be upon precept. Okay. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse 1. 2 Timothy, chapter 4 and verses 1, read. Mm -hmm. I charge thee, therefore, before Ahiah, mm -hmm. and the Lord our power, Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, mm -hmm. and his kingdom. Go ahead. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. So we hear that. We don't got time to be playing church. In season and out of season. 
Meaning you don't feel like it. You know, you always said, we just covered that. You always, when someone asks you, you got to have a word to give them about Christ. Why you have Christ in your life? That's, you have to be ready. In season, out of season. Go ahead. Reprove. Reprove, that means to edify. Go ahead. Rebuke. Rebuke, that's and correction and love and correct them. Okay, like we're doing right now. We're, we're correcting those those. Lazy servants that are out there. Yeah, yeah. Slothfulness. You know, yes, you, you're being slothful. That's a demon, by the way. Go ahead. Exhort with long suffering and doctrine. So we are to exhort you with long suffering. We, we know we got to be patient with And doctrine. With Israel. And, and the doctrine. Okay? The doctrine of what? The doctrine of Christ that we're preaching. And also I say, uh, exhort with long suffering mm -hmm. and doctrine. In other mm -hmm. words, it's telling you exalt your brother, encourage your brother, said with long suffering, but not with your own. We say with doctrine. With doctrine. With doctrine. Mm -hmm. Don't be trying to put uh, a band aid on uh, a gunshot wound. Mm -hmm. No, when you exalt them with long suffering, you do it with the, the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, I feel sorry for you, brother. Oh, brother, it's going to be all right, brother. You know, man, we're going through hard times, brother. Yeah. And you ain't mentioned the most high, the scriptures not one time. Mm -hmm. Now, when you exalt them, you uplift them, mm -hmm. encourage them, it said with doctrine, doctrine. not your opinion. Mm -hmm. Get not that straight. You, yeah, not what you feel. Right. What the word says, like we're doing this evening. Cry aloud, spare not. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For verse 3, mm -hmm. for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, you see, and, and, and I pray it don't happen, but this evening is going to be something that's going to leave. Because you're getting the sound doctrine, <laughs> you're getting this word, and you're like, man, I, I got itchy ears. They, I can't handle this truth. I got to go somewhere else. See ya. Wouldn't um, want to be ya. Deuces. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. But after the... But after their own lust, mm -hmm. shall they heat to themselves teachers mm -hmm. having itching ears. Right. So they're going to go to those teachers where they can they they don't get correction. Mm -hmm. They don't get rebuke. You know, they, they don't get the sound doctrine. They're yeah. going to sit up under that, that elder. It's okay. We all just got to get along. We all going through problems. Mm -hmm. we all, it's, it's okay. And why they say it's okay, guess what they're doing? Mm -hmm. Ching, 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 ching. Mm. It's okay. That's their bait. But mm -hmm. Satan over there going, yeah, I got both of them. I got two for the price of one. Mm. That smooth talking, those itching ears. Well, I like the way he teaches. Mm -hmm. He really don't raise his voice that much. You know, I was listening to this. Uh, he said profanity. He said, he said F, he said B, he said this and this and that. The Bible said oppression make a wise man mad. But they take mm -hmm. that little thing out and forget about the message. Right. And I'm talking about all the brothers and sisters out there. Cause we got some great teachers out there. Okay, great teachers. But that's what our people want. I tell them, go back to the poor child preachers, man. Yeah. Spare not. Cry out loud. All right, let's get verse four. Verse four. And they should turn away their ears from the truth. They're going to turn away from the truth. Go ahead. 